Hello, Arlito. This is Roger Ammerman. My Indian name is Abba Chaha, I above. And today I'm going to instruct you on developing and putting on a rag turban. There's different types of trap turbans that Southeast tribes, including the Choctaws, used. These were very popular in the mid 1700s to mid 1800s. They were like the Nike of their day. Um, this particular turban involves one piece of cloth that's several feet long. This cloth is over 13 feet if I extended that all the way out. I can't possibly do that. I have to uh, fold it in half. And just if there's anything you leave this instructional video with, it's, it's a lot of wrapping and tucking and folding in the in putting on this turban. First of all we have it the turban split in half and I'm going to put it on kind of like a pirate buccaneer shawl. So you see I have it half it's hanging to my feet. I'm going First of all, I'm going to do one wrap. We're going to have a series of wraps. I think approximately four wraps. And, you know, you could put it on real fast, but take your time to make sure you're folding it and you, you want to make it look presentable. This is how you, you the, the Choctaw man would have been looking in the public. So I'm, I, I just want my cloth really malleable and easy to handle and I'm going to take one side so I look like the pirate just to start off with the uh, cloth is completely on my, on the over the base of my thing I'm going to have a little width here and it's going to get smaller as we proceed so uh, again I might be tucking in a little bit up here just to keep it all together keep it tight keep it tight I might even hold this particular tie in my mouth while I do the other one just to keep we want to keep the turban cloth taut uh, have some degree, so it's not loose and it's not flimsy okay so after one wrap over both sides Again, I, I just I'm just tucking it in. It's kind of to the wearer's comfort level, comfort zone, how they want to appear. In the back, I'm kind of tucking it in, and I just want it. I just want it all together, nice. I don't want pieces sticking out here and there. I don't want to look shabby. So we're gonna do my second wrap. Please be patient. I'm going to make it a little thinner because we're tapering it down. Just as the cloth starts out with several inches, maybe a couple feet wide, it tapers down to a point, as you can see in Preston Ammerman's instructional video. So we almost have it now. I've got the left, I wrapped it around the left side. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost home. So these two strings, there's a certain reason that it went all the way to my feet in length because it's specifically and strategically designed so these two ends in in front and I am able to not only tie them, but I can hide this ugly knot I'm making. So I'm just going to I'm just going to knot it, but I don't want this stupid knot in my way. I don't want people to see the, the ends of this. You got to be professional. So that is, like I said, we're going to be tucking and folding. And I'm going to hide that in some of the folds, if possible. Might be easier said than done. 
but this is the basic look of the of the turbine. Now I'm going to check it to see if it's the height that I like it, the part, if I want a little of the ear exposed, a little hair exposed, a lot of hair exposed, I, I customize it to my needs. So we more or less have a hat now. Now I'm going to have Preston pause the video while I get the feather piece, because I'm going to show you, we're going to use these folds. These folds uh, are very important. And then... The part that we started off with is what I'm going to tuck the hair, the uh, the feathers into, and believe it or not, it's going to stay there because it's it's uh, entrapped, it's in enveloped within those three wraps we did today, as well as right above it, it butts my head and it's caught right in the main fold at the top of my head. So pause, Preston. Thank you, Preston. I am back. So. Whether you're using one feather, an ostrich feather, eagle feather, hawk feather, uh, that's, there's different ways, there's, there's different roads to roam here. So let's say I want to wear an eagle feather. I can use the back of my folds and trap it as shown. So against my head, but also envelope between all the other folds. Some of, some of the better looking men, want they don't want it in the back part of their head. They want it in the front part. So, same concept though, they're going to trap it within the folds and hold it and against their head as well as the three folds that we just did. So this is the real basic and we can get it way down in our folds so we don't go nowhere. So, you could, the wearer could add only one feather. Now, the, the, the well-dressed Southeast man had a much more ornate feather piece. The idea is when that you, that male moves across the floor, moves across the land, that just the slightest wind makes those feathers dance on his head. And that's what was considered the, the, the aesthetic sensibility of our ancestors was they wanted that, that feather dancing on their head when they walk. Barely any little wind, barely any movement. So they might have a bone or some hardened piece to stick in the folds. That's to keep it down in the folds, between your head and the folds. And then they fletch the feathers. That means they stripped the feather shafts, took the, uh, the fletched air parts off the shaft of the feather, and those make it so these feathers are light and they dance. So you're not using the whole feather, you're using the fletched feathers. These particular feathers are a combination of hawk, different types of hawk, and then the front frontal lobe feathers are heron. So our people are very important that we use southeast birds. That's our relatives. That's who we're related to. Egrets, cormorant, herons. You know, stuff like eagle feathers and stuff. Not so much. You know, there there was there was different animals and birds in the Choctaw people's cosmos, and we. It's a great privilege to have those things on our body. So I'm tuck, tucking in the bone part, and the bone part has a little piece of leather that all those flat feathers are sewn to. I will put that in now. And now you can see that at the side profile, just a little movement, and they're moving. That was that was the aesthetic of 1800 of the early 1800s late 1700s was just to move around and for people to notice you as you as you stroll across the ceremonial ground or you're in a public place now I could have done I could have like I said I could have put the feathers in back and that was up to the wearer so Preston shows you on the video that I could wear it like that if I want I personally think it looks better when our ancestors wore it up front and fluffed it out. And it, and the movement, the visual is from 
front of your body to the back, your whole head. All right. Thank you for your uh, viewing today. Get a hold of me if you have any questions. Uh, you have my email, email uh, address. And uh, I, if you want to uh, learn more about these turbans, I'm glad to uh, uh, teach about them. Thank you.